So you got your new MLED Reach RS3 base station and you're wondering how do I set this thing up? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to set this thing up, how a couple little tips and tricks with it if you wanna mirror different networks and um, how to make sure that you can get the most out of your RTK network. So the MLED Reach base station is a portable or permanent base station. So it does have a built-in battery. So if you get a SIM card and you put it inside, there's a SIM card slot on the bottom here. It's labeled SIM, goes right there. You can actually put this on a tripod, put it in the field and use it for um, vertical accuracy if you're doing tiling or scraping or anything like that. Or if you just wanna move your base station around, um, you can do that as well. Otherwise, you can use what they call the EXT port on the bottom and your kit will include one of these. And this allows you to plug this into a 110 outlet and have constant power to it. And then you connect it to a Wi-Fi network and use it that way. So this base station is not line of sight. So it doesn't need to be 30, 40 foot in the air. Most people put this on the side of their house, on the top of their shed, anywhere where they have a Wi-Fi network um, that's reliable. And that's all you need. A solid mounting point, place to plug it in, Wi-Fi network and a clear view of the sky. If you're using the base station as a portable base station, one of these rubber grommets on the bottom is labeled USB. And you flip that open, it just uses a regular old USB-C charging port like most phones do. And one is included in the box with your receiver. So to see the battery level of your base station, if you're using it in portable mode, you just hit the button once. It looks like I have one light less than full of battery and if I hold it and these lights will turn on and it'll start flashing now the receivers or the base station is turned on now it's super windy outside I'm not gonna be able to record very well so I'm gonna go put this on a tripod outside the shop door and then I'll stay inside and I'll show you how to get it set up and get it connected to Wi-Fi and all that stuff so the first thing you need to do before you even set up your MLID reach RS3 base station is you need to sign up for an MLID end trip caster so i will leave this link down in the description of the video but you you hit sign up and then you can get um all the credentials that you need to use your base station with your receivers once you get signed up for your caster you'll get information like this now mine is going to be um, blurred out because i don't want anyone stealing my my caster information but right here the stuff that i'm highlighting right now that you probably can't see that is what you type into your base station if you scroll down this is the stuff that you type into your rover or your gps receiver that is on the tractor so once you have your receiver outside hooked up and turned on you want to download this app it's called mlid flow it's available for both ios apple devices and android devices now secondly you're going to want to go to your settings and you want to go to your wi-fi and you should see a MLED Reach Wi-Fi network pop-up. There it is, I'm connected to it. Now I've already connected to this one before, but the first time you connect to it, it will ask you for a password and the default password is MLED Reach, no capitals. So once you're connected to the Wi-Fi, you will go to your MLED Flow app. <clears throat> I'm gonna hit refresh here. And there, my MLED receiver is popping up. Now, it's not going to let you connect to it until you set it up first. So, I'm going to hit the Set Up Reach button. Um, you can set up a name for your base station. I'm just going to hit Skip for this tutorial. And now, here is where you select which Wi-Fi network you want to connect to. Now, if you have a SIM card installed, uh, this might look a bit different. But I want to connect it to CCR Farms here. So, I'm going to type in my password. Okay, now the password is typed in, so I'm gonna hit connect. Now, what you need to do is you need to go back to your settings. I'm gonna turn my Wi-Fi off, turn it back on. And now I wanna to connect to the CCR Farms Wi-Fi network or whatever Wi-Fi network you chose when you decided to set this up. So I go back, I'm gonna hit the X in the top left corner. I'm gonna let it sit here and think for a little bit. And I'm going to hit Setup Reach again. So now I hit the three on the top. 
And now if there is an update to do to your reach, it's gonna start updating right now, but mine is updated to the latest firmware. So it's just gonna go straight up, straight into setting up the reach. So now I can close the screen and I can click on the top one there. And now here is the setup for the MLED reach. So correction input, there's different ways to actually input an RTK network to your reach. Now this can be helpful if you want to mirror a network. So I'm in Minnesota. If I want my base station to mirror the Minnesota state network, I can switch this over to NTRIP and then I can type in my Minnesota cores information um, so I can mirror the cores network to my own personal network. That way I can switch back and forth without any issues and my lines will not move. However, if you're in a state where you don't have a cores network or you don't want to have any correction input, you just set that to off. Now base output, you're gonna wanna click on NTRIP and now this is where you would type in the information that you got earlier from signing up for the MLED caster online. After you get that done, you're gonna wanna go to settings on the very, very bottom. And if you're using a SIM card, you can turn mobile data on there at the top. The main one that I want to turn on is this turn on automatically when powered via the EXT port on the bottom. So that way, if you have a power outage and then your battery runs out, and then your, when your power turns back on, it'll automatically turn on the MLED base station again, rather than you having to climb up on top of your roof or wherever you have your base station positioned to turn it back on. So that's just kind of a handy one to have um, as a backup, just in case. Now to actually get your RTK working, you're going to need to go to base settings. So if I hit this configure button, there are multiple coordinate entry methods. If you know the coordinates of your receiver, you can enter them in manually. So if I go down here, I can enter my longitude and my latitude, but I want to do an average single. So an average single is just going to take its GPS signal that it has right now. And then you can say, I want to average this position. You can do it from one second to 20, basically 30 minutes. I would recommend, you know, if, if you're in an area where you don't have another RTK network to pull off of, I would recommend doing this for as long as you possibly can. So 30 minutes. Now, if you are mirroring another network, if you have a correction input, you're gonna wanna turn this to average fix. So that way it'll wait for a fixed signal from your other RTK network before it averages out this one. And if you're doing an average fix, you know, one or two minutes should be plenty. But if you're in a state like Nebraska or South Dakota or North Dakota, where you do not have a cores network and you are not going to be mirroring any other network, average single. Now I'm just gonna do it for 10 seconds here just to show an example. And then also you wanna set your antenna height. So I just have mine set up on a tripod right now, but let's say we're on the side of a building and it is seven meters tall. The max height is 6.419. Well, I guess we're gonna do 6.419 then. Save, and then hit save again. And now you will see it is finding its base marker. So there is my longitude, latitude, and my height above sea level. Now, it is very, very important that you take these measurements right here and you write them down on a post-it note or write them in your notes on your phone. Keep these coordinates somewhere readily available and safe because if for some reason your MLED base station was to ever die or, or run into issues, you might need to reset this up. And if you don't know your coordinates that you're set up the first time, if you have to come back and redo this all, all your lines could move. But if you have this saved on a post-it note and for some reason you have to reconfigure this, you can just save this 
And then when you reconfigure it the second time, you type manual, and then you would enter in your longitude, your latitude, and your, your height above sea level. So once all that is all in, you have your correct, your correct, your base output set. You should be able to type in the rover information from your MLED account online into your GPS receiver and start using RTK. So that is the, the basics of setting up this base station. Um, trying to think if there's anything else. There really isn't, that's about it. Here's the status bar. This just shows you how many satellites you got and, and stuff like that. And if you have your correction inputs turned on, but um, yeah, that's, it's very easy to set up, all done with a smartphone. And I got a little bit more stuff to show you guys outside of the cell phone. So one thing that I'm asked quite often is, if I made boundaries with this, can I use this without having to remake all my boundaries? And now the answer to that is probably not. But one way to get around it, and I actually did this last year and it worked really, really well, is if you put this on top of the roof of a tractor and then you, you get close enough to your base station that you can connect to it for your cell phone. If you get put this on top of your tractor, you let it get RTK correction signal, and then you take a picture of your latitude and longitude coordinates, turn the tractor off, don't move, take this off the roof, put this on the roof, and now what you can do is you can manually edit your longitude and latitude coordinates until the coordinates that this receiver is showing on the monitor matches that of your John Deere RTK receiver. So you would literally, if longitude was showing a lower value, you would literally pull up your phone and you just slowly bump up your longitude value on your base station until it matched that of the John Deere receiver. Then you do the same to latitude, and then you'd have to go back to longitude and then do latitude again, because when you move latitude, it actually moves longitude too. So it's probably a five, 10 minute process, but it would allow you to have, to use the same boundaries and lines that you made with your John Deere RTK receiver or SF3 or SF2 or whatever, as you did as you, with this. So little trick, um, I did it last year. I planted with this and then I sprayed, cultivated and combined with this and it worked fantastic. So um, just a little, little food for thought, something that you can do if you want to match your John Deere RTK network. And what it also allows you to do is interchangeably, so if you still have a 6,000 RTK that you use or 3,000 or whatever, but you want to add this to your fleet, um, if you do this method that I'm telling you, your manual adjustment method, um, you can use these interchangeably. Um, so, yeah. So that's the basic setup on how to set up an MLED Reach base station. Now this was, I use an RS3 for an example, but I believe the RS2 and RS2 Plus would be basically the exact same. So if you got any questions, um, let me know. Um, if you've already purchased a receiver or base station from me, you already have my phone number. If not, leave a comment down in the description um, or go to my website where you can contact me there. Thanks for watching.